Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Shop Talk. I am your co-host, Andre C. Right over here, it's the epic princess herself. It's Melball. How you doing, Melball? I'm doing great, Andre. Had a lovely day today. It was nice to get the booty scooting. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I did. I stayed up late last night. I uh, got up early this morning to record to do a live stream with Bobby and uh, Mark, and then I've played video games and cooked turkey dinner today. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Because as we record this, it's Canadian Thanksgiving weekend. Mm -hmm. It is, which means the hours at my gym change. Oh, okay. That's good. I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. That's definitely a bad thing when I like to go early, but it's what it is. I don't yeah. expect people to be there at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Anyway... That's a good thing for you. Less people. Very much so. Because we all know Melball doesn't like people. She really don't. <laughs> it sounds mean, she but she likes her don't. people. She likes her people. She likes our fans. She likes you, the fans. She just doesn't like people near her, when, especially when she's working out. I don't like people near me, period. Because people true. don't really know boundaries. And then they start bumping into you. And then being like, ah, uh -huh, it's my privilege to just sit here keeping bumping into you. Meanwhile, the rage inside of me. Or when you're out in an event and creepy people just keep getting way too close to you. Another person mysteriously tries to kiss me and I'm just going to start punching people. I'm down okay. to see that. I am down to see that. I bet you would. Yeah. I uh, bet you would be. <laughs> Any whoozles. We're not here to talk uh, about me beating people up. We're here to talk about other people beating other people up. Yeah, but maybe one day we could see you beating somebody up. On the ring. You never know. Strong pass. <laughs> I know my place. My place is in a butt and a seat. I think there's one person I think you would want to beat up in the ring. But we'll, we won't go there today. <laughs> No, there there really isn't. I would love to see other people beat the shit out of other people for me. Yeah. But I'm very I'm very happy to just be a butt in a seat and a loud mouth in it at that. There we go. There we go. So we are going to get in here. We're talking our city Thanksgiving Thunder. But before we do that, I want to thank each and every one of y'all for tuning in here and checking the show out and uh, just supporting us in general. We want to thank you very much. Uh, if you were, you're listening, if you're seeing this, we you're watching us either on Andre and Melba Wrestling Talk or over on Backbreaker Video. We thank you so very much uh, for joining us here. Uh, so if you're if you are watching, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. We love hearing from you. We love talking to you. We love getting just the feedback on what you like and what you dislike about. Like, mostly about me, I guess, because there's nothing to dislike about Mel, but there's a lot to dislike That's about me. Able. <laughs> please let us know in the comments what you don't like about me, I guess. And uh, please share it out to all your friends, family, and just the creepy little weirdos that exist in this world. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. <laughs> nah. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta bring those creepy little weirdos in, you know? Mm, it just because of spooky season doesn't mean you gotta let the freak flag fly flyer. Keep it down. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what did you do? Oh, it's my, my Jason my Jason Voorhees mask. Yeah, but now I got a weird noise for a second there when you hit your microphone when you try to yeet it. Don't stop that. <laughs> rude. I am very rude. So rude. <laughs> So let's get into it. Let's talk some RCW Thanksgiving Thunder. And it kicked off with the top championship in all of RCW, the RCW North American Championship. And it was our boy, the ultraviolet Mitch Clark, taking on Jack Pride. Yeah. Yeah. Ultraviolet, because... Mitch Clark is out here with uh, my life. Yeah, Mitch, Mitch is out here with touching those violent tips. He's breaking all the hips and he's holding all of the championships. Yes. Yes. Uh again, oh. I 
I'm loving the return of Pride to RCW because he ju- it just uh, and just like last month he came out had his had had a great match last month with Sid, and then now we get him versus Mitch, and I'm just like I am in heaven here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, we both know. I mean, there are three reasons that I come to these shows. Mitch is one of them. Um, and the last show we had a great. Great match between Pride and Sid mm-hmm. to to kind of start off Pride's what we'll say comeback in RCW. Yep. Um, Mitch Clark has just been blazing trails, I guess, with his uh, title run here with um, defense after defense. I really enjoyed this match, and why don't we just start off the show with yeah. with um, Mitch Clark? Love of my life. Take us into the match, man. This was fun. Yeah, some really good uh, spots here. Uh, at one point, Pride goes for the three amigos. He gets the first amigo, but Mitch reverses the second into a huge throw, tossing Pride across the ring, just yeets him over his head. It looked yeah. great. Oh, so good. Yeah. Um. So, Pro- like, Mitch is going for, like, an inverted DDT. Pride flips over him, going for an inverted DDT of his own. And, and Mitch flips over him and, get and like, comes down, like, AJ Styles. Like, he, he does flips and goes all the way through into the inverted DDT. Looked really good, I, I thought, mm-hmm. there. I like that little one. Um, Pride dodging a moonsault from Mitch and goes in on Mitch. He's beating the heck out of him, choking him on the ropes. Uh, Pride really throwing those vicious forearms in this match. Uh, they're, they're, he's got some, he's got good forearms. Uh, Mitch reversing a lariat into a beautiful snapdragon at one point. Pride uh, loading up on on those haluba kicks in the corner, uh, and then gets him down in the corner and hits that running cross body against the uh, bottom turnbuckle. Ah, uh, that's uh, one of my favorites that he does. It's so good. I, I, I love that one. Um, at one point, Mitch uh, just gets a hold of uh, Pride, just starts carrying him around, and then just Northern Light suplexes him over his head. Just mm-hmm. just a power coming to this man. A Spinley Binley at one point gets reversed into the Code Breaker. Sorry, the Ludwig Van Driver gets reversed into a Code Breaker. I got I to gotta say it right for Mitch. Come on. Uh, you said it right the first time. <laughs> that gets an off the shoulder gut. Like he gets him up on the shoulder. Uh, the Mitch fights back and gets back on his shoulders. We're thinking, okay, he's going for it. And then just lifts him off and just drives him in with a gut buster. Just look great. Just look great. Um, he's teasing us with it, is what he's doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Mitch puts Pride up top. Pride fights him off, hits a stomp off the second rope uh, to the back of Mitch Clark. He goes back. Uh, um, he he like he's just getting on the crowd, just telling like just just being a dick. Uh, he goes up to the like he goes up and he slips like kind of slips going up to going up, and the crowd kind of all goes ooh at him, and he just was like was a gap. Meh, and just he's like screw this and just falls backwards off of the elbow, and I'm like I love that. I love that. It was uh, such a nice little just for the moment thing. Because, yeah, the whole crowd was just like, oh. It was like an audible gasp. Hush fell over the crowd. And he was just like, screw you. And just kind of went backwards into an elbow. <laughs> yeah. kind of what he was going to do. So he goes back up to the top. Goes for the top rope stomp. But Mitch gets out of the way. Hits a lariat. Falls with the spinly, binly Ludwig Van Driver for the win. This was great. This was a great opener. This is a high energy. The crowd work with with pride was a nice kind of um, opposite kind of thing than where Mitch doesn't usually interact with the crowd unless you're really hating on him. Then then he's going to pay attention to you or us because love my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. It really set the pace for the rest of the show and really was kind of like the start of a really, really great night. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a lot to add to this. You kind of picked off everything I just kind of remember. I usually just go by memory for these shows. 
Yeah, and I did skip the open to the show, and I kind of screwed up. Uh, there was a bit of memorial for uh, one oh, Vince yeah. Austin off the top of the show who did mm-hmm. pass away last uh, or last month. Yeah, last month. Yeah. And uh, they did a 10 bell salute, and the crowd mm-hmm. with a round of husses for uh, Vince to hush, mm-hmm. hush. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is kind of a nice little beautiful little spot and they announced that mm-hmm. next month the show will be a uh will be a, a all proceeds from the show are going to go to the mental health to mental health uh, mental health charity and mm-hmm. um yeah so it just and it's all the rest was going to volunteer their time everything so we're going to be there november 8th at the uh norwood legion and then there's the calgary show the following weekend on the 15th will be the same thing it'll be a tribute to vince in calgary on saturday the 15th so please if you're in other other city go check that out and give support a good cause mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. Yes, uh, we are going to move on though, moving to the second match of the show, and it was a hardcore open challenge, and it kind of got messed up right off the hop because of the production team. God damn production teams and that's like, boys, you have one job. Yeah, there's two so, of you. One of you could have done it, right? Yeah. So uh, Lee brought Nate out to the ring, like. And showed him out. And we had a nasty section. We did. We did. I I think I sent you the video. Yeah, I did. So I sent you I, the video. I posted it. You reposted oh. it. Did I? Oh, I don't remember reposting it. Oh, no, wait. That. Nate did. Never mind. Nate, Nate did. I did. I'm like, I don't remember reposting. I remember sending it to you. That's because you never fucking check your Instagram. That's very true. I'm bad at Instagram. I'm bad at all social medias, man. I'm just not good at it. It's never been my thing. Um, I send you the stuff. All you need to do is check it. It's true. So uh, Lee brings out Nate, and he's going to give Nate the microphone. And then before he can even say anything, the the music just starts playing, and it's Barricade rolling his way out for this open challenge. And then the music changes again, and it's Moses Luke. Uh the German juggernaut coming out and to make the challenge. And then the music changes again. And it's the Canadian goose coming out. Kyle Shaw. He rolls out the challenge for the hardcore title. And then uh, finally the music changes again. And it's Rick Jules making his way out for the hardcore challenge. So you see we Lee whisper to Nate and Nate just shakes his head and Lee decides, oh, I guess it's gonna, it's gonna be a five way match. It kind of threw the guys under the bus a little bit, still just a little bit mm-hmm. with the announcement, which I appreciate because God damn it, I have mm-hmm. one job. Push the button, button pusher. Yeah. So there we got our match, five way match for the hardcore championship, and everybody's just fighting. Just pure utter chaos in this match. Glorious, glorious chaos, yes. Yes, the glory is good. Uh, Jules dives off the top on a barricade and Moses Luke on the floor. Um, uh, Jules just smashing the face of barricade repeatedly with the trash can lid. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. And uh, then later they were like almost having like a sword and board kind of battle where like barricade was going after Jules with the kendo stick and Jules was kind of Captain America that shit. <laughs> I, that must have been one hell of a freaking trash can because, man, Barricade's a big guy and he's got a good swing power. He was probably swinging on pretty good. The fact that that can was in one piece. Goddamn. Well, and Where Barricade did they come from? Is, Barricade's head is pretty goddamn hard and pretty goddamn thick. So uh, it's, it's gonna, that head is going to do some damage to that trash can lid. <laughs> Yeah, that that lid was holding up real good, all things considering. I was impressed. Yeah, uh, good Nate, job, lid. Nate gets goose in the ropes and gets that nasty German through the ropes. I love that yes. move. Um, so good. Barricade in gets in, wrecking house, taking out uh, Nate and Goose. Um, yeah, he gets a beautiful Samoan drop to Nate. Nate to. To, to Nate, but then uh, Jules comes in with just a running kick to the face of Barricade. Uh, Jules goes up to the second, goes for deep impact to Goose, and it looked odd. 
um, the diving DDT. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a little odd. Let's just say that. We, I didn't like. I actually turned to you because I was like, "What was that supposed to be?" Because I wasn't quite sure. And when you told me it was Deep Impact, I was like, "Oh, uh, oh, okay." Yeah. Like it, okay. it looked like deep impact, like uh, Yoshinobu Kanemaru's deep impact, that diving DDT, but whatever it was, it was effective. It worked. Uh, Goose was like, go was flopping all around. Uh, Goose was goosing. Yep. Uh, Jules then follows up with a spear for two. Uh, Nate hits an elbow to Jules and follows it up with the air raid crash. Um, <laughs> Goose starts head just starts throwing headbutts at Nate, uh, pulls out Mr. Flacco. And gets uh, Nate with the mandible claw and the mandible claw suplex over his head for two. Um, Nate gets comes back with his nasty with a nasty knee to Goose on low strikes and uh, gets the power slam, but only gets two. Um, Moose ends up tripping up Nate, pulls him into the post crotch first, uh, then just smacks him with the cookie sheet. It was just with our with Nate's cookie sheet too. It's mm -hmm. a nasty cookie sheet. Um, uh, Moses is in. He slams Goose, uh, and then he goes and hits the cradle shock or the or Mel would know Miramare shock. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, Nate then hit tax and breaking up the pin with the cookie sheet and follows it up with hitting Buck Nasty for the win. Mm -hmm. This was fun. This was another glorious kind of chaos thing. Yeah, the beginning was a little fuddle-duddled. Mm. But the match, we ended up getting out of it. The way they kind of just improvised it. The crowd had a great time with this match. Um, I liked also how they just kind of would take random people out, beat them up enough, throw them to the outside. And enough attention on things was drawn into the ring that you weren't really paying attention to who was crawling around on the outside. Mm -hmm. I also like that at no point were these guys sitting there like on the ring, looking in, waiting for, for things to happen. I really appreciated the, the organicness of this match. Also appreciated seeing the Huss written across uh, Barricade's face there. Um, I didn't know. Maybe it's just that I haven't seen it done before. I didn't know. About Goose is Mr. Flacco. I didn't, I've never seen him do that before. So that was like yeah. a fun little excitable thing for me because Nathan knew exactly what was going on. He's losing his shit. And I'm like, why are we getting excited? Well, Flacco, what? I think, is a is a Thursday night LPW guest, has been lately on the Thursday night oh. LPW shows. That's where Mr. Flacco's been showing up. So oh, okay, okay. So that makes yeah. sense. Okay. Yeah. I mean, well, even the one we went to though, I don't remember seeing him there. No, no, like he's fairly new. He's a fairly new guest of LP of the oh. LPWC uh clandestine wrestling society shows. Um, but yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a fairly okay. new guest there. I know mm. he has made an appearance a long time ago, but then Mr. Flocko mm. went away and now he's back. I don't know. I mean, it is the migration season, so it makes it, sense. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then after the match, Nate did lead us in a hush chant for Vince mm -hmm. Austin. Just to, like a tribute to the man who was very hardcore himself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True yeah. facts. True facts. Like that belt. Also. Oh, yeah. oh, that belt is gorgeous. That championship is very, very nice. Oh, yes. Yeah. We move on. Submission match. Uh, it is Kat Von He's taking on Ginha. They are tied one and one. This is the rubber match, and it's all down, come down to submissions. Ginha mm -hmm. is all in targeting the arm throughout the match. Mm -hmm. his finish, it seems like his, his move is an arm bar. That is what he's working here. Um, Kat, though, she's really using her power throughout to really fight back against Skinha because she, mm -hmm. she out, like, he is taller, but she is, she, I think she's got the power advantage. Just, it's... 100%. It, yeah. Um, uh, Kat at one point stops, or he gets, like, a hot, like, he's working the hot shot into the ropes on the arms, and he's just smashing mm -hmm. the arm into everything. Uh, Kat stops her chain to 
DDT into a Northern Lights. Goes for a sharpshooter, but Gena fight does fight it off and just goes back to attack. Like he up kicks the arm and everything. Um, she does get the sharpshooter on at one point, but Ginha does get to the ropes. Um, Ginha, those slaps. Holy man, he got slap. He got slaps, man. He got slaps and chops, man. He's got some power in those. Um, they, yeah, I mean the lucha background, the lucha libre style is known for its chops, and you've seen the difference between the regular chops and the Mexican chops. Those Mexican chops are just they're nastier. No pun intended. Well, Penta, think about Penta, Penta, uh, Penta El Zero. He even with a glove on, those chops sound. Just nasty. Then he'll take the glove off for that final job, and it's just, mm -hmm. it's just gross. It's almost, it's just gross. Well, let's just hop back to the best of the Super Juniors. Hiromu Takahashi versus his own partner Teton. You see Hiromu oh. throwing the regular chops. You see Teton throwing the Mexican style. You heard and felt the Mexican style in your soul. Mm -hmm. Um, the, you know, regular chops are just as nasty, but. Them Mexican chops, but then to have that he's the Bruchador, right? The, the British Luchador. So then you can combine that with the strength and power of that British strong style, who are known for their chops and strikes. Look at Zack Saber Jr. Look at Chris Brooks. They are they're also very, very chop happy, and also too very British strong style Brits. This is like a tattooed, masked. Osprey, or not Osprey, as uh, Axel Jr. Just not quite as good, but <laughs> <laughs> fair, I fair. like him. He's developing very well. Don't get me wrong, but he's got some stuff to him. Um, Ginha goes for this uh, the Minoru Suzuki over the top rope uh, arm, like uh, arm bar over the top rope. Yeah, but Kata, Kata is having none of that, and she no. just takes him and yeets him across, like back in across the ring. It was great. I think was I was great. at the concession time at that point, and I felt the vibration of that land in the floor. It was tremendous. Yeah, um, Ginha slips out of a power slam and hits a hammer lock arm bar. It gets her down to the hammer lock, gets the arm bar, and goes back with that penta arm snap. Oh, Jesus. We Both me and Nate were like, oh, no. But he did that. We both did the reaction to that. It was just gross. It's just well, gross. Yeah. It's naughty, not niceness. Yeah. Um, he goes for a drop kick off the second rope, but Cat uh, uh, reverses it into a sharpshooter, leans back, grabs the head, and Ginha is forced to submit. Cat Von Hees is your winner. Yes, yes, Queen. This was a great match. I've I've really been enjoying the little kind of story that these two have been quietly telling um, the last couple of months here at RCW. It's kind of been like one of the only stories they kind of have in RCW that they're not really sensationalizing, and I don't know why because this is actually really fun, really exciting, and especially like you know. It as you mentioned, I mean, Ginha is slap happy. He is very much like there's a fine line here in wrestling where you got to watch what you're doing when you're wrestling with a woman, but not <laughs> Kafon. He is, is is a whole nother woman entirely. This is not a woman I'd want to stand across the ring from. I don't want to be in her corner for sure. Um, this has been a really interesting uh, little development, though, and I'm excited to see if they keep this going. Because I personally wouldn't be mad about seeing it and seeing another kind of stipulation match. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious to see what they would do or where they would go from here. Yeah, I could honestly see them going again because I think they mm -hmm. have had some really good flow here and really good, like, I, know. like, I don't know, I really enjoyed these two working together. Yeah, I like it when I see the like a match card with these two on it because I know it's going to be a fun and exciting match. It's going to get the crowd going because the crowd is very, very solidly behind Cat. The crowd very, very solidly not behind Ginha. It's great. Yeah. In the couple of months that he's been here, he has this crowd hating him. Like yeah. they hate this man. Like to go to come out like pretty much 
to a, like unknown to this crowd a couple months ago, and mm-hmm. now having this crowd hate him to the degree they do, it, it's mm-hmm. absolute perfection. I go to something that you had actually said after the show when you were actually talking about fusion, and I wanted to kind of relate the same sentiment to him is that it's so crazy to think that someone who has been has literally had the one thing that you could actually convey emotion and charisma with in your face, you're covering it up with a mask. And how is it that you are able to captivate the crowd so effortlessly with everything else? It's so crazy. It, it's it's he, he, like I see it in, in Ginha and I see it in Fusion. It's that mm-hmm. full body expressivity. It's how they wave their arms. It's how they like just block, like how they block themselves to the crowd, like how they stand towards the crowd and it is their stance aggressive are mm-hmm. they like like are they like at the crowd or are they like at the crowd like they have that they make you feel just the way they position their body it's how they and how they move mm-hmm. how they like express themselves with everything except the head it, in it, it, it's so weird man it, it, but it's so well done mm-hmm with him also, I feel like, um, and we also saw it with, with Fusion, it just on a different way, because Fusion is very much a face. And and Ginha is obviously, is it Ginha or Ginna? I'm calling him Ginha. <laughs> okay, well, Red Devil looking guy. Um, he's very obviously a heel. And what I love is that when the crowd starts booing him, he really latches on to it and he much like how Mitch does when when someone's antagonizing him and his matches, he latches onto it and really sensationalizes it and really plays off of it and does even more like dirty, nasty, not nice things to make the crowd hate him and boo him even more. And he just seems to play off of it in the opposite way that Fusion does that we'll talk about later in the show. Mm-hmm. Very much so. So we move on to the not poison choice match, but the match for the RCW International Tag Team Championships, the only real tag team championships in RCW, obviously, because the other ones haven't been defended in months. So those titles to me no longer exist. Uh, you at know least, what? At least don't even did. mention them because you know what brings that no, one. I'm not, don't I'm, I'm not saying good. their name. I'm not saying their names. I'm just saying we don't need them to Joe Hendry us. Nope. Please, God, no. Uh, we get that uh, for the RCW International Tag Team Championships. It is Rich King and T.Y. Jackson, the Rads, because they're touch, they're, they're, they're touching tips, shaking hips, and winning all the championships. Uh, Take on uh, J.J. Spade and the returning Dean Rector. So happy to see that. The return of Dean. What did we call these t- this team combo when we were at the show? I don't know. I think we called them. No, it, um, you guys were chanting fisting. Yeah, but that's no. for that's for <laughs> Dean. <It's> like... <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus! I think uh, we were calling it. We were, we were chanting time to like fist. That. We were chanting yeah. time to fist. And I'm just sitting there mortified. Jesus. Always- Dean's always fisting in the air, man. I know. I'm the one who pointed it out. <laughs> oh, you, you Much to my dismay. I, I did. Because if I Dean really sho- if Dean, did. If Dean shows up at, our, at uh, LPW in two weeks, um, me and Nate are going to be chanting, let, let, let's uh, time the fist. <laughs> we may as well. It's Halloween anyway. We got two moons, I guess. Yep. So we get into it. Again, really good match. Uh, Rich and Dean going back and forth early. Uh, Rich just hits a suplex. Dean ends up rolling the other side. Rich, like, teases going for a dive, and he's just like, nah, and just tags in T.Y. who goes for the dive. But uh, Dean runs away. <laughs> T.Y. doesn't hit the dive here. But I love Rich just, like, te- go- teasing the dive and going, nah, and tagging T.Y. to do the dive. <laughs> when I was sitting there thinking about it after, I'm like, Rich doesn't dive, does he? I don't recall ever seeing him do dives. I know he does, like, jumps off the top rope and stuff, but, like, he doesn't do dives. 
Yeah, he like jumps. He'll come off like the second or the top into the ring, or go, jump yeah. over the top rope to hit his final BTDT from the apron. Yeah. But he doesn't do like diving stuff. I, I I don't blame him. I don't think I would do dives if I was if I was a wrestler. Even like, if I was, well, even, yeah. like, I wouldn't. No, no thanks. Remember, every time now we see it, we're like, catch that T. Why? Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, um, JJ and T.Y. going back and forth at one point. JJ gets a beautiful monkey flip to uh, T.Y. It looked really good there. Um, a lot of good stuff. Dean gets uh, Rich and seated in the corner. He hits that hesitation drop kick. Um, <laughs> then he hits this big German for two. Um, but the best story about this entire match was Dean Richter's uh, inability to follow the rules and JJ's... Uh, reluctance to break the rules and it, it was definitely a reluctant team for sure it was absolute perfection because dean's like pulling ben the ref into the corner like getting him distracted and like telling him to do stuff to i can't think it was the ty and he's like this starts going like a choking motion and ben like stands up and turns and like he's like it, his like dean's hands are like right at ben's neck Oh my god, it was absolute perfection. And like Dean is so, so good. Like Dean is getting more and more frustrated as this match is going on with, with the fact that JJ will not cheat. And it's so good. Yeah, oh. it was a really fun little story that they just kind of randomly told in this match. We kind of figured something like this was happening, but we didn't expect the way it ended up playing out. And man, was it just a treat to just yeah. watch point where jj punches dean after rich gets out of the way um mm. and jj's taken out and rich gets his final beat ddt uh just so just such good stuff in here ty uh, uh drop kicks the knee of dean getting him down to his like he was on hands and on fours and ty off the back of dean to hit the poetry emotion to jj in the corner looked mm. great um just Really good stuff. Ty ends up kicking Dean, like kicking Dean from the apron at one point in the corner. Rich, Rich falls with the tornado DDT, and Ty hits a beautiful moonsault for two. Um, it just Dean fighting off the double team tags and JJ hits a strike and he drops Rich and JJ hits the frog splash off the top for two. The end of this match comes though. JJ drop kicks Dean off the top when uh, when Dean was holding Rich and Rich got out of the way. The end of drop kicking him. Ty gets tagged in. Ty hits a tope uh, tope con helo to Dean on the and, and JJ both on the floor. Uh, they bring uh, Dean back in Olympic slam in uh, by Rich into the Swan Time by Ty Jackson and the Rads retain. The RCW International Tag Team Championships. Hi. Yeah. There wasn't any doubt. This is the real tip touchers. Yep. Not, not those. The, not, not those MXM poser wannabes who steal gimmicks from from great tag teams in Alberta. <laughs> they know good shit when they see it. Mm. Um. Anyway, um, this was a fun match. Obviously, we love watching the Rads. Um, I was really impressed, actually, with the story that was told, as we mentioned, throughout this with JJ and Dean. It was similar but different to the story that was told um, when they kind of did the similar story a few months ago with um, Martins and uh, Dalton mm. taking on Kamikaze and Cody Mack. Have we seen both of those matches already? I feel like we have. I think Calgary got Dalton versus Cody. Probably. I don't think... Did we get Martins versus Cam? I can't remember. We watched so much wrestling. Anyway. Um, sure <clears throat> I feel like we have also. Um, so it, was, it wasn't a poison match? It was just for the tag titles? Huh. They when the when Lee I mean, made the announcement, there was no announcement about the poison choice. So interesting. I don't know. We'll go with it. I mean, I want to also say I was impressed that every match that was announced for the show actually happened. That's a rarity. 
I was super excited for all of the match cards too, but I was like, mm, which one of these is not going to happen? All of them happened. Freaking stoked about that. Good job. Um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to add to this. It was just a really fun ride watching the chaos between um, Richter and JJ versus just the, the just camaraderie of the rads was just mm -hmm. so fun i love the story it created i'm curious to see especially because afterwards you know there was a little bit of um you know, yeah we'll, we'll say um disagreement um from jj and and richter so we'll we'll kind of see how that goes so yeah the rads did celebrate after the match uh, they leave, and then JJ and Dean start shoving each other, arguing. Uh, Dean hugs JJ and like holds the hug for a little bit, and you see JJ kind of like, what "Fuck is going on?" Like he's like this is like your face, look on his face, like, "What the hell is going on?" We're all yelling, "Don't trust him!" And he then belly to bellies him, attacks him, Ben pulls him off of uh, JJ. JJ then spears Dean and starts attacking him, but Dean like wriggles his way out and gets out of the ring running to the back and it looks like this might be a thing i, I i'd be really happy to see this on that november 8th show let's go i would also fisting versus jj let's go yeah good match yeah fist the, the yeah fisting he's gonna fist that spade you know i don't, I don't know i I have no comment on that <laughs> because what what do you say? What the what do you say? Do you say what what what, what do you say? Do you say? <laughs> I don't know what we're doing right now. What's going on? I'm going insane. <laughs> we move on to Harlan Abbott versus Son of Irish. Uh, I gotta give props to our, our boy Jason coming uh, dressing up as Macho Juice tonight, everybody. Yeah. But I made a joke to him that he's dressed up as uh, as soy juice, and he's like, "No, soy boy is the worst." Aw, poor soy boy. Oh yeah. Poor he doesn't boy. like yeah, Mitch. He doesn't boy. like soy boy Jason. Why are we friends with him? Like, cause we yeah. love Jason. Yeah, but if if he's if he hates on the people that we love, can we love him? That's the real question. Well, Jason, you might have. You, you, sir, you know. we have had some very big disagreements on wrestlers and who is good and who is not. So, like, how are we friends? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. This match is pretty goddamn phenomenal. Like these two, yeah. we've seen them go. Uh, at RCW in the past, we've seen them had that they had that incredible match at Top Talent. Uh, was it early, last year or earlier this year? I can't remember when it was. Year. Yeah, dude, these two ha are just have it, and they they killed it. Took it here, killing it again. The chops here from Harlan, and then the churn chops from Soy Boy were just crazy. Um, just the, the crazy stuff they're doing. Uh, Soy Boy gets that phenomenal forearm off the top rope from the apron for two at one point. Like they're just going insane man um so by getting a beautiful satellite ddt to harlan mm -hmm. um, so boy hits a tope serious right into it to harlan into shauna and her crew on the other on the opposite mm -hmm. side of the ring yeah. that was nuts um yeah, i just, love that it was just so perfect too that she didn't even have to move she just chilled yeah, yeah. uh <laughs> harlan really showing off with us let us go doing that flip kip up uh, in this match, where he, the front flip kip up from the ground, I I was like, ooh, he's got the he's, he's got a pretty strong neck. That one, yeah, I was just really impressed. I I I don't know if I've seen him do it before. Uh, he gets uh, Soy Boy in the corner, hits that corner, and Seguri follows it up with the X Plex, which is like the suplex that he just lets it, like that like Moxley does, where he just releases. Um, mm. I fucking love that move. Um, so oh, great spot. So everybody goes for the uh, standing shin rye, which is like the standing slice bread. He goes up, but then Harlan just pushes, just lets him go and just catches him and just spins and hits that tombstone. The transition mm -hmm. to reverse that was absolute perfect. 
perfection. Yes, very much so. That was yeah. Um, it's a great spot. Uh, somebody ends up on the apron, hits a kick, uh, then hits a phenomenal cutter, like phenomenal forearm style. Bounces, comes up, goes off the top rope, but then comes through with the cutter. I was like, oh, that was really good. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, F5 gets reversed into an Enziguri. They, they do have series of reversals. That ends with Soyboy hitting a Tiger Bomb for two. Um, this end of this match, though, uh, Soyboy goes to the top. Harlan cuts him off, comes up, hits a pump handle suplex off the top. He then picks him up. He hits him with the healing driver for the win. And if, if that's not what you call it, Harlan, please tell me. I'm just calling it a healing driver because I don't know what else, else, else to, to name it. <laughs> Some of the guys have reached out to you and told them or told you their, their moves. Well, well one wrestler moves. after the show said he was going to send me the, the proper, like his name for his moves, but he still hasn't messaged me. <laughs> yeah, well, you're probably still going to be waiting. <laughs> Uh, that one's phenomenal for getting in touch with you. Yeah, this crowd, though, like, they were back and forth. What? Like, our section was very pro Soy Boy. I was hearing mm-hmm. pro Harlan chants from other sides. But, like, man, this crowd was really back and forth. And, like, mm-hmm. uh, Stang, Jason, and that crew really had the hate on for Soy Boy. I could see them. They were flipping them off throughout the match and mm-hmm. just getting at them. It was, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Oh, well, that's what you do when you're a good heel and you're a good face. You get the crowd going. I mean, Son of Iris came out beacon at everybody and sticking his fingers in people's faces. So, of course, he's going to get a return on receipt on that. He's doing pretty good with the heel stuff. It's just, I, I had a great time with this match. I don't have anything else to add to it. So we went to intermission, then we came back uh, to Teddy Hart making his way out. Mm-hmm. And he cut a promo about life and death and a bunch of other stuff that I really was like, can, can we can we see some wrestling, please? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I've i heard him ramble on in so many nonsensical promos that I'm just like, okay, great. Yeah. Um, it was a good promo, I guess. Uh, Slammer and Sid Green make their way out. Uh, Teddy's talking a bit of shit to Slammer. And then Slammer gets the mic. He says, to make it to Valhalla, you need to die fighting. He said, Vince Austin died in fighting. And he says, tonight someone will die fighting. Uh, then Teddy says, um, he did bring a partner. He's got a partner in the back. And then it's... It's Kato, ladies and gentlemen, coming out with his tribute to Tiger Mask that wearing the Tiger Mask style mask on his head tonight. And I was like, holy shit, I haven't seen this guy wrestle in a long time. Been a hot minute. We've seen him at the shows in the crowd, but we haven't seen him in the ring in quite some time. Yeah. So the official the match is made. It is Teddy Hart and Kato taking on the team of Slammer and Sid Greed, who we just watched two weeks ago beat the hell out of each other. <laughs> like I mean, that's the continuity that we get sometimes with this company, though, where they just maybe they, they scrap things and think that we won't remember or something. Yeah, maybe they know. bonded through violence. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't, uh, that Delwood show is a different, I think, territory, we'll say, because there are a lot of people doing different things there that weren't normal because, you know, Rich and T.Y. were heels there, whereas their faces here. So, like, you know, maybe, maybe they were, like, not okay a couple weeks ago, but now they're, like, they've had a few beers and they're good or something. Might be an alternate universe. It might be an alternate universe version of, of sure, our we'll bring that in. Yeah. yeah, bring in your Marvel universe stuff. Why no, Chad? We're we're on Earth One. That that Delwood uh, and what, what took place on Earth Five or something. I don't know. That's Earth Five Slammer and Earth One Sid. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we get into it. It's tag match. Um, good, good stuff throughout. Uh, Kato 
uh, looking like look, this is really nice rope. like the, where the suplex where you lift them up, that you bounce them off the top rope and back uh, to Sid. I thought that looked really good. Um, mm-hmm. Sid and Slammer double teaming Kato for a while throughout this match. Uh, mm-hmm. Slammer gets the choke slam to Kato. Um, he gets that, that Tower of London style stunner uh, from the top mm-hmm. rope there. Um, Kato fighting back, takes out Sid accidentally. Sid t- attacking Teddy uh, from the outside to stop Kato from tagging out. Uh, he, uh, Slammer gets him up with an F10, just launching him. Um, Teddy eventually gets tagged in. So it's running through everybody. Uh, Teddy hits a lung blower powerbomb to Sid. Uh, everyone fighting to the floor. Teddy hits an acai moonsault to everyone on the floor. Um, Teddy ends up setting up some chairs on the floor and suplexes Sid onto the chairs that the fans are sitting on. And these are solid chairs. These aren't like folding chairs. These are solid, mm-hmm. like, like hall chairs. And goddamn, that did not look pretty. Um, yeah, and but uh, just a bunch of crazy stuff here. Uh, like it was this weird spot where like Sid and Slammer are through the ropes, and Teddy's like up, and Kato comes off the top, grabbing Teddy, forcing him down to like DD, get like a double hangman ZDT. It was re- it was that was a weird one. I, I was like, huh, okay. I think there was potentially a sense of unwillingness on. One of or two of the people involved to do the move. Yeah. So we, uh, Teddy, th- there was a spot where they all fight outside. And, um, and I'm just like, all right. We don't know what happened because we didn't leave our seats. Yeah. It's not like we have a Titan Tron or anything where it's a camera feed, which is, it's just. Although we did have a camera crew. That's rare. Yeah. Big, tall, giant guy named Andrew. No, the, oh. the guy. There was a guy with the little camera running around. Remember, John? Oh yeah, but I know Angie was filming a lot of shit throughout the night too. Yeah, I know because when we were booing the hell out of the people in the last match, he came over and filmed us booing. That is very true. That is very true. Because <laughs> suddenly there was a camera in my face. <laughs> um, uh, Teddy, uh. He hits a diving DDT to Slammer. He then gets a bear hug to Sid and into the cradle hammer lock DDT. Uh, Kato hits a rope walk into a stunner and then Teddy to Sid and then comes and Teddy coming off the top into a Canadian destroyer to Sid Greed for the win. My poor Sid. Yeah. Sid took some punishment in this. Yeah, it it was both it was Sid and Cato who kind of got both worked over in this match quite a bit. While Slammer and Teddy kind of got the the sparkle, we'll say. Um, yeah. yeah, I I had fun with this one. I mean, it, it it wasn't one of the ones that enraptured me for the night, but considering the the rest of the night that had happened, I was really exhausted. Um, emotionally by the time we got to this. Um, but yeah, I had a great time with it. It was really cool to see Teddy. The last time I'd seen him was the the Nate show that he worked against uh, Michael Richard Blaze. That was the last time I personally saw him. That might be the last time I saw him too. Yeah. And ironically, I think I turned to you earlier in that night because uh, m- the other Mel Ball was messaging me as well. And I was like, it's so ironic that she's messaging me right now because the last wrestling show that she came out to live, she came with her her little, her daughter, Charlotte, who's still a baby. And Teddy Hart was working that show. Hmm. So funny. The irony. Uh, I'm cool. sure, yeah. Uh, that's kind of uh, that is kind of funny because like Teddy really hasn't wrestled in the last few years much. Mm-hmm. Like he's had three like this little RCW run is the first like at least for according to Cage Match, which is, is only as accurate as people who are reporting results from shows. He according to Cage Match, he, these are the only three matches he's worked officially this year. Um, he had according to Cage Match one official match last year. 
Um, and then hmm. that was 2020. So, yeah. Well, the wrestling was pretty solid. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, oh, yeah. Build-wise, he looked great. Sparkle pants were very... I wanted to put them on chic. Yeah. Which is boots. Yeah. <laughs> it was nice to see Kato. I love seeing Sid. Fucking yeah. Slammer was there too. Yeah. Take us it, into what happened at the uh, the end I'm, there. Just, I'm looking at Teddy's cage match, and yeah, the last time he was around, he was here was in Alberta before this little run was 2019 for that ladder match. Yeah. Yeah. So post match, um, Slammer decides to start f tening Sid over and over. And over again, and Bobby Sharp returns. He makes the save, saving Sid. Um, and uh, Slammer grabs a chair as he's trying to fend off the lion because he's got the legs first. You, you had point. You, you had Nate had made that joke, and I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, Nate, Nate, that was all Nate. I was just a happy bystander in that one. Yeah. Um. So Bobby gets the mic. Says he's healthy. Uh, and uh, he wants to tribute Vince Austin next month at the November 8th show by challenging Slammer to to one of Vince's favorite favorite gimmicks, the steel chain. And it's going to be a steel chain match. Um, so, yeah, uh, and then Slammer cut, said, uh -huh. he said. He said stuff. He said stuff that just sounded really creepy. Uh, how he responded, and he accepted the match. Uh, he essentially said that whips and chains excite him. Um, yeah. I remember because I turned to you at that point, and I was like, "Yeah, I thought this was a family show." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like, uh, I mean, what? Do He's he comes out wearing like BDSM cape, so Don't like has me. Yeah, I I'm interested. I'm curious. I mean, it's gonna be great to see Bob back. Looks like he's in in great shape. I was gonna say also Teddy's looking like he's in pretty great shape as well. Yeah, like mm -hmm. for the guy who hasn't wrestled in how long? Like the the guy is always like the guy is a natural talent. The same way we look at uh, at Son of Irish. Teddy Hart is the same way. The man, like both the both of them grew up in wrestling. Everything about their mm -hmm. life, professional wrestling, growing up. So it's not surprising that like the man can be away for that long and still come back and still be so smooth. And I, mm -hmm. I, I, I gotta believe this man, wherever he's living, where he lives, has a wrestling ring in his basement or in his backyard or something, and is constantly training and doing something because there's no way you're that good if you aren't doing something constantly. Like doing yeah, and grinding and yeah that's how you get better at this shocking mm -hmm. perpetual practice yep My so we move on semi main event of the evening it is for the rcw hey. heritage championship it is cody mac defending against christian star and the and the RCW Heritage Championship has uh, specialty rules and one of them is a 10 minute time limit mm-hmm we and uh, we have a new nickname for Mr. Cody. Matt. <laughs> I don't know if you, have, if you guys had brought this up to him in person. Oh, we were we did, okay. we did. He thought it was hilarious. So we have our new champion, Mr. Roman Rig. More Roman Riggs. <laughs> oh. I kill myself. Uh, that was Mike. Well, Mike who came up with that one. Was it an originally oily reigns, and then it became Roman Riggs? I think it was. I think they was calling him oily reigns. I don't know what the first one was. No. I heard we oily reigns, and then I heard Roman Riggs, and I'm like that's way. Better. I don't. I didn't hear that first one. No, because we were just saying that the hair was very Roman reigns reminiscent. Yeah, I thought and it I turned thought into wanted... Roman Riggs. I thought one of them said called them oily rains first, and then I heard Roman Riggs. So I did not hear, cannot <laughs> confirm. So we get the code of honor before the match. They shake hands, mm -hmm. uh, good sportsmanship. Uh, Cody using this. I didn't take honestly, dude. I can have. I barely have any notes for this match. That's weird. Um, I must have just been really into this match. <laughs> it was a really good match. Oh yeah. Um, 
Mac using the power and size advantage that he has here. Mm -hmm. uh, in a beautiful uh, head scissors that hits that springboard head scissors, sending Cody, Cody to the floor. It's that tope suicida. Um, Mac gets back in the ring and he's getting the chops in the corner and hits a hard whip into the corner and the lariat and the suplex for two. Um, Star fighting back, misses a drop kick. And Cody, it's where Cody hits his first pump kick, and I know he has a name for it, but he still hasn't sent me it, and I don't remember because we were. I was, Pretty sure he told you, and you just forgot. Also, well, he started. I listing, also forgot. Well, he started listing, and I'm like, okay, just message me this. It'll be a lot easier if I have it written down, so I can put it all into my notes. And he never messaged me. So, I'm wondering what the pettiness. I know his. I know his lariats are called pipelines. So he he's hitting those. He's hitting a lot of pipelines in this match. So, yeah, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I didn't. Remember, I do remember that one. Um, Star fights off the shoulder, and he hits a super star cutter. The uh, the super os cutter. Uh, for <laughs> see, I'm giving it a name. I'm just making sure people understand what move it is. But he hits the super star cutter uh, for two. Uh, end of this match comes. Mac puts Star up top. Star's fighting him off, but Cody fights back. We get to one minute remaining. They're fighting. Uh, Star knocks him off the top, and he, he stands up, hits a 450 splash, and then one, two, ding, 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 ding. And the time limit expires as the ref was counting to three. And Cody Mac is officially your winner. Because, uh, because just like Jeff Cobb, if you if you get to the time limit, the champion is officially your winner. Mm -hmm. yeah. And boy, howdy, was the crowd pissed! Oof. Oh, we were mad. I I, yeah. I echo that sentiment. I was like, the fuck. And then you were like, oh yeah, ten minute time limit. I'm like, the, the fuck. No way. It that did not feel like ten minutes. It felt like. So quick. Time flies when you're having fun, I guess. Yeah. It was a really, really fun match, though. I mean, the combination of the two styles, as you mentioned, that power kind of background with Mac versus that kind of aerial tendency of Christian Star. We saw Star also continuing to work very hard with his crowd interaction throughout this match, trying to get the crowd fired up. I mean, he didn't have to try hard. We were mm. excited for this one. Um yeah, I had a really, really good time with this one, but man, I was pissed about the end. But that means that we have the opportunity to what's that? What's the the phrase you always use? Run it back. Yeah, run it back. Again? Please start. Oh, please yeah. start that. Maybe you know, take maybe make that ten minutes a fifteen minute time limit next time. Like, ah, oh, man, these I two were so good. Yeah, no. I wouldn't be mad. Because how strong do both of these guys look coming out of this? The champion being able to outlast the challenger and the challenger taking the champion pretty much literally to the time limit. Because who's to say if Cody Mack would have been able to kick out of there? Yeah, that was a pretty solid like 450. He was actually able to. Yeah, it was a solid 450. And kudos to Ben for stopping the count right when he needed to. That was just everything was so perfect about this match. Except that's for... Yeah. It's Ben, I know. It's just, it's just a good ref right there, man. It's just a good ref. Senior official. And we were sitting next to uh, an, an LPW official, too. And we were, we, were. About, and we were complaining about the other official on the show, too, that official. Well, you did at one point in the next match start a Kill Smalls, Murder Smalls No, that chant. wasn't the one before this. Was it? Because Ben did the last few matches. Pretty sure Ben did the main event. I could be wrong. But I did chant, let's, uh, uh, death Murder to smalls. smalls. No, yeah. death to smalls. Death to smalls. So it doesn't mean he has to murder. This is a children's maybe, show, in case you maybe, guys didn't know that maybe, also. Maybe a heart attack. Maybe he falls off a cliff. We don't know. I'm not saying somebody should kill him. Just death Bruh. to smalls. Ah. Horrible. Horrible. <laughs> Andre. <laughs> this I is why say, Smalls always comes to say hi to me. I didn't say murder. I never said murder. I just said death. 
Oh, yeah, Lord. Is yeah, there anything yeah, else to say yeah, on yeah. this? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, want to yeah. sick the clown on him? That you know, that would actually be an appropriate punishment. The smalls has, has effed around a little bit. Yeah, maybe that's what I was chanting for. It was for Fukikin death, not actual death. His random, like, yeeting into <laughs> the way of things randomly is kind of a little sus. Yeah. So Anyway. And we move on. Main event of the evening. It is for the RCW British Commonwealth Championship. It is Kamikaze mm -hmm. versus defending against Fusion. The man I used to call yeah. because I'm because I'm an ass, but he's Fusion. Um, right. <laughs> uh, uh, dude, these two compliment. It was, and I even I said this to Cam after the show. It was like watching young Cam versus now Cam. Because, like, Cam, in those early oh. days, when he was wearing the mask back in PWA, in those early days when I was watching him, he was very much a flyer. He was mm -hmm. flipping around, doing a lot of lucha stuff. That was his influence. And then when he made his return last year to professional wrestling, he went to train in England and learned that British strong style. And has very much, you see, you still see the lucha in him in some of mm -hmm. the things does but he's very much he's gotten very more technical in a lot of things he does so it was like watching a young cam versus an older cam and i loved this match i was i i was so blown away by how good this was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is the charisma that we were mentioning in here because we got two super 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 charismatic people i would say arguably the most charismatic people in this company Maybe with a couple others underneath there, like the Rads or maybe Harlan. But like the effortlessness that Fusion had with this crowd, it was fascinating because when he came in, not a lot of people were too excited to see Fusion, but we were excited because we've already seen him. We knew what to expect. Cam came in and he had the crowd in his hands. But somehow throughout this match, Fusion stole the crowd from Cam. And the crowd was booing Cam and cheering Fusion. It was phenomenal. But both yeah. these guys did so good. Take us into it, man, because I'll just and, ramble. And you can see it in Cam throughout the match. You can see the man getting angrier and angrier. And getting <laughs> yeah. more vicious. Like, he was getting more vicious with his chops. He was just, mm -hmm. like, laying more boots in. He was getting so much more, uh, like, like mean with everything. There's a spot where they're both mm -hmm. kind of, like, Flipping around, avoiding each other, and then they go both go to boot and they catch other kicks. And then they're putting each other's foot. As soon as they put the feet down, Fusion just hops up and drop kicks Cam out of the ring. I was like, and and that was kind of the start of Cam going, "You son of a bitch, you son of a bitch," <laughs> and just like getting a little bit angry every little bit. And that's where it mm -hmm. kind of started. Um, this, there's a snap mare, and then Cam jumps up onto the second, then jumps like almost. Coffin drop style, but turned to the last second into the leg drop to a seated fusion. Um, I love that. I love that move. Um, fusion with that beautiful handspring back elbow and follows it up with a hurricane rana. Just so mm -hmm. smooth. Um, Cam climbing up to the top, but uh, fusion insecurities him and then rana's him off the top for two. Um, Fusion's going for a move, but Cam reverses it into a pump handle, uh, a pump handle Michinoku driver. But he ends up missing the moonsault off the top. Uh, he misses the moonsault off the top, but then goes back up, hits a second uh, turn, a moonsault off the second turnbuckle, and he gets to uh, Fusion. Sends Cam out and hits this bushy like rocket tope suicida to the floor, um, and then they start fighting on the floor and. Fusion goes to whip Cam into the wall, and Cam runs up the runs up the wall, backflips off, grabs Fusion, and just rams Fusion right into the wall. And it's like a brick like mold on the wall, so it did not look comfortable to hit. Um, he then tosses him back in, goes to the top, front flip, leg drop off the top for the win. God damn, was this freaking! good yeah this is an amazing match an amazing way to top off this show like from start to finish the show is just really really solid i've really appreciated the little 
micro stories that happen throughout the night. You know, my my complaints on that. We can talk about that after. But um, with this match in particular, Fusion, again, I, I mentioned he kind of captivated and, and pulled the crowd away from Cam. Man, was he charismatic behind that mask. Just getting everybody to chant for him. The crowd interaction was great. But Cam was also all really, really great at interacting with the crowd. But he kind of like almost at some point in time accepted that he was working the heel in this one. And we've seen it with a couple guys who are usually faces here where they just kind of accept it and, and work with it. We've seen it with uh, Cody Mack a couple times. Now we're seeing it with Cam. And they do tag. Um, with RCW more in like the South, in, in like Calgary Toolshed, as well as uh, pure power wrestling. So it, it's interesting to see the the change in the character, just the alteration, whether it be temporary or permanent. Um, yeah, I don't have a whole much, a uh, whole much, whole lot more to add to this. I just enjoyed this whole show. Just I was just like a little kid in a candy store. Just oh my god, this is phenomenal. For the rest of the show, it was great. I yeah, like, t-shirt. yeah, and like this main event just capped off. What was like? I'll argue this is might be some of the best from top to bottom indie wrestling going on right now. Um, it just everything delivered for me. Nothing, like nothing. Mm-hmm. Show lost me. Like, mm-hmm. and I just. No, no, no. Top Talent has just amazing cards they put on. Love Pro Wrestling puts on amazing cards. I just, mm-hmm. I think it's had so much. This is one of the best shows I've been to in, in all year. I just, I absolutely love these guys in here. I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. Well, there we can, I'm sure at the end of the year, have a, a discussion show about the the indie shows that are kind of going on here. But each one kind of has their little thing that kind of makes them very endearing or or just kind of brings it more near and dear to one of or both of our hearts and with with the rcw shows at the norwood it's definitely a smaller venue so i feel like we we get a bit more of an intimate feel not just with our friends and, and the people around us but with the show in general because it's easier to get into that mob mentality when you're mm-hmm. crammed into a room with like how many do you think were in there? Because that room was packed. There were people even just standing behind us. There was no room. Oh, yeah. There, there's people sitting on the stage behind us, uh, yeah. standing all around the building. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was packed, man. This crowd. Absolutely packed. These people were there to watch some wrestling, man. Yeah. And boy, did they get a show. So again, the matches were solid. There was a great marketing background that went into it where like again the matches that all were announced all happened in pretty much the way that i I assume they were supposed to Mm -hmm. um everything about this was so organized so good except production with their little nasty nate kind of kerflub we can we can forgive that for how Mm -hmm. amazing and how solid the rest of the show was Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we get to meet the wrestlers before, during, and after the show, most of them, Mm -hmm. the ones that choose to come out and interact with the people. Um, We don't get that really at at other places as easily. Like LPW, it's like if they choose to come out, they come out. So most of them are. We see Pride pretty consistently there. We see um, them out. Yeah, the Rads, we've also seen uh, Paralira will come out pretty regularly. Top talent, I don't tend to stick around. I go hang out in the parking lot with with some of my friends after the show pretty quickly now. But, but like, I don't find it easy to, to kind of interact with them there. Oh, I because I find the guys are all out at the ta- are all out at the there's a bunch of guys usually all at the merch table merch table at Top Town before and after the show. Like good to know. Well, again, as I as I there. said, I'm not normally in there. So yeah, that's true. That's true. You you just want to go smoke. Well, no, I have my friends that come up to work the show. That's and true. I go outside and see them so that, that I true. can 
have a moment with them without, you know, fans and stuff coming up to them being like, oh my God. Yeah, I get you. So, yeah, get we have our little, and usually Eric leaves something hidden in the parking lot for me for me to go on a goddamn scavenger hunt for. Just leave, why didn't you just leave it in my car? Because you're usually already in the building and we can't leave. That is true. We are trapped. We are literally trapped in that building until the show is over. That is true. That is true. Which, which is a complaint in itself. But, but. Um, to RCW, this show, as you said, very, very solid. And we'll have to do uh, like maybe an end of the year kind of chop talk to to talk about what we think about the the local shows that we've been able to go see and what the pros and cons and everything are and what some of their best matches and shows are as are, as we will do any hoozles and one and i want to get we talked about it the vince austin memorial show will be here in edmonton friday november 8th uh so please come check it out all proceeds will be going to uh mental health charities so uh please come out and support a good cause and mm-hmm. to Night of Professional Wrestling, which everybody's donating their time to. Uh, it's going to be a great time. I can. I'm. I'm. We're going to be there. Uh, we're going to be there, mm-hmm. sitting in the back row as we usually do. <laughs> we'll have to sit closer to the edge so Mitch can come tip our touch, touch our tip. Wow, <laughs> my dyslexia uh, came out in that one. Jesus Christ! Your dix- <laughs> dyslexia. Ah. Uh, uh. mm. That's what I heard. I heard dyslexia. Uh, uh. Uh, all that dyslexia uh Uh, well probably because you started talking and i thought i was being cut off (laughs) well we have come to the end of another episode of chop talk uh you don't have that ready there we go now i have it ready uh you can find me on the X at that can guy TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that candidate. You can find me on Facebook at Andre Melville Wrestling Talk and on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash at Andre Melville Wrestling Talk. You can also find coverage of our Japanese wrestling content over at A Plus Productions on Facebook and A Plus Productions.com where you can find the feeds for the A Plus Sports, A Plus Entertainment, and A Plus Wrestling where you can find mine and Melville's content. You can also find me over at twitch.tv slash Our Local Establishment or youtube.com slash at Our Local Establishment where you will not be able to find me this Wednesday, but there will be an episode of Marvel Talk uh, hosted by our boy, old Ed, but I will be at Bowling for Soup. So screw you, Ed. And I will... Uh, he, he's a big fan of Bowling for Soup, too. So, yeah. So screw you, Ed. Um, and uh, I and so I won't be there, but Ed will be there with a uh, special guest host. So co- check that out. Uh, that is Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern, or it should be around then. Uh, and then I'll be ML, and then yeah, you'll catch me other times on OLE when I show up, like I did this morning on uh, the uh, on Bobby's point of Point's view. And I'm mm-hmm. probably going to be there again next weekend because Mark's going to be missing next weekend, so I'm probably going to show up for that one too, just to antagonize Ed and tell him all my great stories about going to bowling for soup. <laughs> you can You're call- so heady. I'm, I, he, 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 you, you should see the messages between both of us. He's just as petty to me, um, especially when he saw Die Jack first and he was being a dick about it. Um, you can also find our content uh, restreamed over at youtube.com. So at Backbreaker Video, Mike puts our stuff up. Oh, a week after it comes out on Andre and Melba Wrestling Talk. Uh, you can also find uh, all the great content he does live at twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref uh, every Wednesday, Saturday, and pay per view Saturday or Sunday, depending on which one they do it on. You can find him watching the, doing the AEW watch alongs. Uh, and then uh, the rest of the week, you see him playing video games, all the different games that he does play. Replays of that, youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore gaming, where you find content from him, Mr. PJC. This wee little lad right here, which you saw on the RCW show that we just reviewed, Rick Jules. And therefore, we can guest. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. We love Kayla J here. Yes, we do. Mama, mm-hmm. where can I find you? Your home, minding my business. On the interwebs. On the interwebs, you can find me on the X thing at Collins Melball. You can find me on everything else. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Melball Collins. 
You can also find me on our local establishment's programming Japanese wrestling update with this guy. Every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. You Unless sure? it's not. Are you sure, though? Unless it's not. <laughs> and then we'll let you know on social media. This week will be a pre-recorded episode because, as we mentioned, we will be attending the top talent show at Midway. The TT. We'll be attending the TT to see Kurt Angle and chant, you suck and not feel bad about it. I'm going for Beast Mortos, but... I mean, so, so am I, technically, but not everyone else is. Mortos! The Beast Mortos! Anyway, you can also find me on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We will hopefully have an episode coming out for you very soon, so stick tuned to our socials to see when that is going to come out. If you're wanting to watch an RCW show, we will leave a link in the description box down below to their Eventbrite, where you can find it through their Facebook page as well as their Instagram page. Um, tickets to the next show are up already, and that was November 8th, right, in Edmonton? Awesome. So get your tickets now, either through there or get into the know with some of your favorite local professional wrestlers, support local, or and you can get your tickets through there. Hmm? Yeah. Andre, my trusted friend and colleague, do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? I just want to say, again, thank y'all for so much for tuning in here and supporting us. Uh, please uh, uh, like the video. Subscribe to the channel, whether it's Andre Melverse and Talker Back Breaker video. Uh, put some comments down below. We love talking to you. We love talking about all the great professional wrestling that we talk about. And we want to hear what you like about the wrestling that we're talking about. Also, don't forget to share us out. Tell your friends, family, and crazy, 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 crazy people who happen to wear hockey masks. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new what, what did we drop? Uh, I can't remember what we dropped. What did we drop, Mel? Me, most times. Oh, yeah. We, when we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. Hello. <laughs> ay, 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 We need to be caged. That being said, I am your Mel Ball. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Yes. Yes. Yes.